show your support, like, share and subscribe. Hello, I am That British Guy and welcome back to the Raw After. Or should that be the Smackdown After? Usually in this series I look at the Raw After a WWE pay-per-view, but in this instance I will be looking at the Smackdown After a pay-per-view, specifically Extreme Rules 2011. At this time Edge had just retired and he had to relinquish the World Heavyweight title. So there was a ladder match between Alberto Del Rio and Christian for the vacant World title. And Christian won the big one, finally. And so we kind of enter into this new age of Christian moving forward as the leader of SmackDown. At the start of the episode we get a little recap package showing us all of this from Extreme Rules and just before Christian is introduced we see Josh Matthews on commentary with Booker T and the annoying heel Michael Cole in his stupid coal mine thing and as soon as the new world heavyweight champion Christian is introduced the first thing Cole does is jump on the fact that he needed Edge to help him win the match, completely undermining his achievement and completely undermining the SmackDown champion and championship, which is absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, the crowd absolutely love it and you can see that Christian is kind of really relishing in the moment and he's getting quite emotional with it. He states that he has often dreamt of this moment and every single way he's played it out in his head completely pales in comparison to living it right here in this moment. He says that he got a text message that night from Edge telling him that he needs to just enjoy this as much as he can and he has earned it and he should just savour every single moment of it. Then we get the interruptions. Now all of these guys are newly drafted over to SmackDown from Raw. If memory serves and from the way things were structured, I think the draft happened just after WrestleMania and just before Extreme Rules. So these guys have kind of been around for a little while, but I think there was a bit of floating over to Raw where they were kind of wrapping up some feuds. Because there were a couple of times when guys who are now on SmackDown faced off against guys who are now on Raw where there was kind of a bit of a switch over. So this is essentially kind of the, the proper reset time for bringing those two brands aside and entering into new feuds going forward. None of this wild card crap! So first off we get Mark Henry and he says look I'm new here, well done Christian but front of the line please. Then out comes the great Kali with Rajin Singh. And Singh basically says, look, Kali's already been World Heavyweight Champion. He knows what it's like. He knows the pressure that you're under. But he respects you and everything. But he thinks he should be the number one contender. And then out comes a face, Randy Orton. And the crowd absolutely explode. As I said, he is new to SmackDown as well, and he basically says, look, I'm the new guy here. Is this how we do things? We just come out and we say we want a title match? Well, okay, I want one as well, because I'm not missing out on this. Out comes Teddy Long, and no, we don't get holla 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 player 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 tag team match, Mark Henry and the great Carly versus Orton and Christian. No, we get a kind of crowd deciding moment where they get to pick the next number one contender to Christian, sorry, Kristen's world heavyweight title. So he calls them out one by one. Do you want to see Mark Henry get the chance? Nah. Do you want to see the great Carly get the chance? Nah. And then because they know what's coming, the crowd goes deafening. Do you want to see Randy Orton get the chance against Kristen? For some reason that's what he calls him. And yeah, the crowd that was already absolutely electric, roof off. Massive, massive noise. And he says, okay, you've got the match. 
Randy Orton versus Christian. And we're going to have that match tonight in the main event. And Randy's like, cool, okay, that was easy. And Christian's like, okay, well, I'm the champion. I've got a target on my back. Might as well get used to this. There's a bit of a handshake between those two in the middle of the ring. And off they slink. Moving on to our first match of the night. More new guys from Raw. Which is really weird because it was probably opportunity for these guys to interact on Raw before they came to SmackDown. But meh. Sheamus, who has just dropped the US title to some guy called Kofi. And he is facing off against Daniel Bryan. And although they are very much entrenched in the mid-card here, it's not too long before the two of them taste some world heavyweight gold. Brian, in fact, handing the belt over to Sheamus after he gets his head kicked off in 18 seconds at WrestleMania 28. But that's long way away. This is a classic power versus speed match, as you would expect from these two. And although Daniel Bryan gets in a few kind of comeback moments, Sheamus manages to beat them down quite quickly. It does look towards the end that Daniel Bryan might get a surprise win when he manages to catch Sheamus in the label lock, but there is a rope break and he rolls to the outside. Daniel Bryan charges through the ropes and eats a bro kick on the outside. Sheamus then throws him back into the ring. One more bro kick. One, two, three. Sheamus wins pretty convincingly. Next up, we have some guy called Cody Rhodes. Whoever he is. What's he done recently, I wonder? And he, not too long ago, suffered a facial injury which caused him, from his dashing persona, to adopt a kind of protective mask. And that kind of made his character a lot darker and he saw himself as kind of physically disfigured. But this made him aware that everybody else, including the crowd, is kind of disfigured on the inside and because of that he is handing out paper bags to the crowd so that he doesn't have to see their ugliness and this promo is essentially a kind of a reset for him he had a match against Rey Mysterio at Extreme Rules and Rey Mysterio won but he only won because he shot some mist into Cody's eyes and picked up the win through nefarious means and Cody saying, yeah, okay, I lost technically, but I won because I got to show all of you what Rey Mysterio is really like, how much of a hypocrite he is, so really, I am the true victor. And now I'm going to be moving on to new things. What they are, I can't honestly remember because... That's pretty much the end of the promo. The only other thing of note was annoying heel Michael Cole trying to call the bag handler people over to give a bag to Booker T. Oh, I really wanted Booker T to just get up and knock Cole out. It was so annoying. Booker T and Josh Matthews worked quite nice as a pair. Cole was just pissing me off. Our second match of the night sees one half of the Tag Champions Big Show face off against Ezekiel Jackson of the core with two R's. Now Ezekiel Jackson and Wade Barrett challenged the Big Show and Kane to a tag team title match the previous Sunday at Extreme Rules and they were unsuccessful. Basically Jackson was well on top, Wade Barrett tags himself in and loses. So there's been a bit of friction with these guys and that got worse essentially at Extreme Rules. Jackson obviously comes out with the rest of the members of the core, Barrett, Justin Gabriel and Heath Slater. And just as the match is about to start, Big Show's tag partner Kane comes out to offer some support. And it is said that although Big Show and Kane are Raw guys, because they are tag champions, they will float between the brands because there's only one set of tag belts. And there probably still should only be one set of tag belts. Looking at you, SmackDown Tag Division, wherever you are. Anyway, 
This is very much a showcase match for Ezekiel Jackson to showcase his power against the much bigger Big Show, managing to slam him. And Big Show does kind of get back into the match, but the core causes a distraction on the outside, which gets Kane involved, and he gets kind of uh, three on one attacked, and that brings Big Show into the fray. And it's that kind of distraction that allows Ezekiel Jackson to get back on top. But he was very much in control for the majority of the match before that point. He manages to slam Big Show for the win. And the core come in and they're kind of all like buddy buddy cheery. Yeah, we won you that match because we're great. Aren't we great? And Jackson just kind of looks at them and walks off on his own. Leaving Barrett, Gabriel and Slater very, very cheesed off in the middle of the ring. But it looks like Barrett has a plan. And we will see what that is a little bit later tonight. We then get a recap of The Rock's birthday celebrations that happened on Raw. And this is essentially the first sort of step towards the John Cena Rock match at WrestleMania 28. Cena has just won the WWE title back at Extreme Rules from The Miz. How has The Miz not won the world title since then? I don't know. Please let him win the belt this year, please. Should have won it last year. Anyway, um, so yeah, we just get kind of a recap of everything that happened on Raw. Next up, we have a women's match. Or should I say, a Divas match. And by God, can you tell we're in the Diva era. Alicia Fox taking on Layla. And Layla had a retirement match against Michelle McCall at Extreme Rules and managed to win. And that was the end of Michelle McCall. And it essentially was a face turn for Layla. And I can't believe it was that long ago that Michelle McCall retired from in-ring competition. She must have only really been around for about four or five years. Anyway, this is a pretty horrible match. Essentially, Alicia Fox gets a few kind of naff moves in. And then Layla hits this really horrible looking neck breaker that I think it was actually Alicia Fox's issue with how this kind of played out. It just looked really awful and picked up the win. But then we got Karma. TNA Impact's Awesome Kong has finally arrived and she made her debut, I believe, at Extreme Rules and I think she decimated Michelle McCall after the match and this is kind of her first appearance on weekly television and Layla kind of scarpers because presumably she's learnt from Extreme Rules what she does and Alicia Fox isn't privy to that information she tries to kind of attack her and it goes nowhere and she gets absolutely destroyed and it's a real shame that not more kind of came of uh, Karma's run in WWE I believe she had um, some health issues or injury issues, something like that. And then she was pregnant and pretty much was released straight away. If i am got my details right, forgive me if I haven't. I remember at the time being really excited to see her in there because thinking, cool, that will actually shake things up a bit within the women's division. And unfortunately, it just didn't come to pass. I think her career highlight was essentially that brief spot in the Royal Rumble where she eliminated Michael Cole, or made him eliminate himself anyway. Never mind. We get the fallout from the Ezekiel Jackson Big Show match from earlier. He is in his dressing room and he gets confronted by Barrett, Slater and Gabriel and kind of stands up to them and knows where this is going and actually says to them, and this is quite a cool line, you better make this look good. Strikes out at Barrett first and is kind of fighting the other two off. Barrett comes charging back in and then three on one, he doesn't stand an earthlies. And it ends with them kind of tipping over, um, whether it's kind of some storage container, something like that, basically flattening him underneath that 
I believe Jackson goes on to win the Intercontinental title, possibly, from Barrett. I think that happens. And he ends up being the last ever ECW champion before that brand dies. So not all bad. We have Chavo Guerrero on commentary because he is commentating on a lucha match. Sin Cara comes out and he is facing off against Tyson Kidd. Now this is the original botchy as hell Sin Cara and he kind of doesn't really botch much in this match which is a surprise. He is a new acquisition as well from Raw but I think he's not really been around that long anyway whether he was potentially introduced at the draft I'm not sure and this was famously Triple H's kind of first pet project and it really didn't work. This is a pretty good match though. It's quite nice to see Tyson Kidd in the ring. Obviously that's not something we're privy to anymore because of his injuries. So it's nice to kind of watch these archive shows to see him in action and just see what a good performer he is and how good he is at showcasing his opponent as well. It's essentially just Sin Cara doing high-flying flippy things for the majority of the match, with Chavo Guerrero basically saying, yeah, my family invented that move, and, and I'm better at that move, and he's stealing all my moves, and he's like a kind of budget version of a Guerrero. Sin Cara hits a Spanish fly on Tyson Kidd for the win and it is clear that nobody within the production team has a bloody clue what that move is. They don't even know what its name is. They kind of exclaim that it's the most kind of devastating, brutal, beautiful, lucha type move they've ever seen in the history of ever. Really? It... I mean, I know we've moved on, and it's kind of eight years ago, but that's just basically a transitional move now. It's nice that it's a finisher here, but I can't believe like, that they were so shocked to have seen a Spanish fly. Really? Anyway, after the match, there is a bit of a tense handshake between Chavo and Sin Cara, presumably setting things up for them, hopefully for Chavo to put Sin Cara over. Then we get some Be A Star stuff. Be A Star WWE. If you have unhappy wrestlers that want to leave your organisation, let them get out of their contract if they wish to. Don't keep them at home so that they can't perform. And if you really want them to not leave your company early, at least showcase them on weekly television. <coughs> Luke Harper. Poor bugger. Anyway, don't be a bully, be a star. Mm. And then that leads us to our main event. Christian versus Randy Orton for the World Heavyweight title. And what a lovely television match. This is kind of the main reason I wanted to cover this show. I remember seeing this at the time and being very captivated with this story and this feud going forward where it actually leads to. Raw at the time was very much, yay, Cena again, woohoo, Cena and The Rock at some point. Oh, shoot me in the head. Yes, we got the CM Punk pipe bomb, which led to his win at Money in the Bank but then he loses the belt pretty much straight away and then we get some more John Cena and Del Rio until Punk basically picks the belt up right at the end of the year. Summer of Punk, yeah cool. So most of the stuff that was going on on Raw at the time was kind of reminiscent of now and the stuff on Smackdown was a lot more interesting Mark Henry gets himself into the world title picture after this match. Sheamus eventually does. Daniel Bryan picks up his first world title this year. Obviously seeing Christian as world champion is quite nice as well. But then they've got the established sort of Randy Orton bubbling around as well and Big Show to a lesser extent to just kind of keep that legitimacy of the top level guys, at least at the time, as well as these kind of newer guys so that the newer guys are being brought up to that level rather than it being seen 
as kind of a B-type belt and a B-type show. Anyway, this match is very, very even backwards and forwards until the break. And then we get Randy Orton kind of taking control of the match for kind of the middle section. Although he is a face, he's kind of playing more the heel. He's not really wrestling as a heel as such, but he's being Randy Orton, slower, more methodical, working on body parts. But not in that, I have got you in a headlock for three quarters of a match, Baron Corbin and Elias. He's actually making it relatively interesting so that the crowd isn't completely dead for when Christian starts firing back into the match. And you can really tell how much Randy Orton actually cares as well because when Christian gets back into this match and starts with big moves back on Randy Orton, Randy Orton is bumping like a bugger. Clearly he cares about this rivalry going forward, he's bothered about keeping Christian at this kind of high level and yeah that really as I say is portrayed in his performance here he's actually selling for his opponent he is trying to keep the crowd as invested as possible without just yeah headlocks and rest holds and all that Blech. quite surprisingly towards the end of the match we get what looks like an angle slam really and then we kind of the end of the match we get failed attempts of finishers Christian constantly trying to hit the unprettier on Randy Orton and Randy Orton attempting RKO that gets blocked and countered at every single opportunity by Christian. Clearly they've kind of used this time to scout each other. They know that these are very, very strong moves. So rather than be hit by them and then try and have to escape, kick out, force a rope break, things like that, they've worked out that it's a much better strategy for them to completely avoid the move altogether lovely love this it keeps both of the finishing maneuvers very very strong because there are no kind of kick outs from either of these moves because they just get countered each time which also shows the kind of wrestling acumen of both of these competitors just as christian thinks he's got the upper hand he goes back up towards the top rope and jumps off seemingly i'm guessing for like a cross body or maybe like a flying clothesline, something like that on Randy Orton. RKO from out of nowhere. One, two, three. We have a new World Heavyweight Champion. Yes, the age of Christian is over after only five days. Technically after two days, because this was recorded on a Tuesday and broadcast on a Friday. After five days. And... Randy Orton is kind of respectful of that, obviously he celebrates, he's pleased to be champion, he makes his way up the ramp and kind of celebrates again there before leaving, and that leaves Christian in the ring on his own looking absolutely shocked, bewildered. The crowd are kind of split because they're so into Randy Orton that, wow, we just saw a title change and Randy Orton's a champion, that's huge, but then they're like, Oh, uh, Christian just lost the belt and he's only just won it last Sunday. What the hell? So there's, like, you can see the, the looks on people's faces are like, yes, and oh no. And Christian just looks completely broken. He gets out of the ring and he's just looking back towards the ring and back towards the area where he jumped off of the turnbuckle and where he was pinned and just kind of playing it over in his head. And he just walks up the ramp very slowly and forlornly, kind of looking out to the crowd, looking back into the ring, wondering what the hell happened. Fade to black. Now, obviously, from here, we get a couple of rematches for the belt. Christian does eventually win the belt back at, I think it's Money in the Bank, where Randy Orton effectively gets himself disqualified because Christian goads him into it. By this point, he's turned completely heel, and he's basically threatening to sue WWE if there's kind of wonky officiating or he gets hard done by. So it is decided that if Randy Orton gets disqualified then the belt will change hands and that is how Christian regains the belt. 
This then kind of runs into Mark Henry's Hall of Pain run where he gets the belt and then that runs into Daniel Bryan picking up the belt at TLC after Mark Henry's match with The Big Show and Bryan holds on to the belt until he is booted in the face at WrestleMania 28 by Sheamus. And then the Yes Movement is born. So this leads on to very, very good things for the brand. Not so good for Christian. Unfortunately, after this, he would then only see gold within ECW. And in fact, he is the man that drops the belt to Ezekiel Jackson in the final broadcast. The more you know. So that was the Smackdown after Extreme Rules 2011. Next month we are going back to Raw and we are looking at the Raw after Payback 2014. Something happened there to do with the Shield. I wonder what it was. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like my content, please give the channel a subscribe. I shall be back very, very soon. But until next time, I have been that British guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.